Hello and welcome to the interactive and immersive HQ. My name is Marco. I'm a freelance touch designer developer, and I also study digital arts and creative technologies in Barcelona right now. And uh, yeah, in today's video, I want to talk a little bit uh, about my experience as a um, freelancer. Like I just started out uh, doing this around half a year ago when I moved uh, to Spain to study here. And before I just had my normal regular job, um, which had nothing to do with touch designer or something. Yeah, it was, yeah, I was just doing some videos. <laughs> and um, yeah, just to let you know, so as this is also still new for me, um, I'm, I'm just sharing my experience here. And this is more aimed to people who also I uh, want to start out uh, with freelancing in uh, yeah, with touch designer or in general the whole interactive uh, media world. So yeah, don't take everything for granted here. This is just my personal experience and um, also some lessons that I learned along the way. Yeah, let's maybe start with a very important question that I really didn't think about um, for a long time. So what are you actually? Are you an artist or are you a developer? Yeah. So if you if you found your really uh, unique style and um, you maybe have a following already and um, for you it's very important to just express your personal creativity, um, then yeah, maybe consider yourself more as an artist. But if you are a problem solver and you are just really good in coding uh, in touch designer and, you know, doing all the logics and stuff, um, yeah, then you are probably more of a uh, developer. Of course, there's also something like in between, but um, I think this is a very important question to ask yourself before you get into that whole thing, because yeah, it also gets you different clients and different kinds of work. Yeah, as an artist, the clients come to you because yeah, they really like your style, and uh, they want to have that for for their project. Um, as a developer, well, the clients they probably have a style and uh, already a concept and an uh, idea uh, in mind and you're just the one who is coding it you know so yeah it's uh two very different pair of shoes i would say so first think about that and then well very important of course where and how can i find touch designer related jobs so well the most obvious thing is uh, of course freelancing platforms. So me personally, I'm uh, on Upwork. Um, I'm, I had some projects here. Yeah. I mean, there's maybe not a lot, a lot, but uh, sometimes there's a good and even big project uh, listed. And um, yeah, that's how I did the one or another job already. And then I'm personally, I'm not on Fiverr, but uh, yeah, you can also like some people offer their services here, you know, I'll create animated or interactive touch designer project file for you. This guy will help you with your touch designer projects and stuff like this. So you could also, yeah, listing like this here on Fiverr or yeah, some other platform. And then there's job boards. So there's one from the official touch designer. Um, on the official touch designer page. So you just have the drop board here and uh, it's also regularly updated. Um, a lot of work is in America, but uh, yeah, here, for example, is one in London or sometimes there's also just uh, remote um, jobs. So yeah, it's definitely worth it to check this out. And then on the interactive and immersive HQ, uh, they also have a job board which is also regularly updated and i'm also looking uh, uh, frequently in here um, also in the newsletter there's always uh, some job listings so yeah you can also find remote work here or also in america or canada or here's also one from london um, so yeah this is definitely 
worth it. Of course, you can also check out other like normal job platforms, but yeah, if you especially search for touch designer, I didn't really find a lot. So maybe, yeah, you have to be more specific about the job role, like, I know, the technical director or, um, you know, interactive media developer or something like this, you know. Then there's also Discord channels. So you could have a look uh, also on the official touch designer Discord channel. They have a job section here where you can also be lucky or sometimes people ask for help, um, for paid help uh, on some projects. So yeah, that's uh, also worth to have a look. And for example, the visual zone um, Discord channel, I also really like. It's in general a very great channel. Um, but they also have a section for jobs here. So yeah, you could also have a look here. It's probably more, um, aimed at, uh, VJ stuff, but, uh, yeah, still, you can still check it out. You might get lucky. But then let's get to the probably most important point, uh, which is networking. Yeah. So. Well, I, I study now digital arts and creative technologies here in Barcelona. It's a city with uh, a lot of exhibitions and uh, media festivals and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm really in an environment now where this topic um, is like almost everywhere. But I mean, still, you have to talk to people, you know, and um, like for me, I'm I got good contacts in my university now, of course, like with other students, but especially also with the teachers, you know, they are mostly very well connected. And um, yeah, I also got some freelance jobs because of that. Uh, but of course, you also need to put yourself out there and let them know, hey, you're available to work, you know, um, you're good in touch designer or whatever you're doing. So um, yeah, the same is with, uh, like festivals, for example, here, here are many, um, new media festivals. And recently I also went to one uh, with a friend and he was also just, you know, connecting, talking to people at their stands or little exhibitions. And, uh, he actually found on that day or night, I, well, he got an interview for a job as a technical director and yeah, has now a full-time uh, job that he found through networking on a uh, festival. So really important. Just get yourself out there. Let people know you're looking for work, uh, that you can do it. And uh, even if you know some other touch designer developers or people in that field and uh, yeah, just let them know, hey, in case you get a job offer and you can't take it, uh, yeah, think about me. That's also how I got the job recently. So yeah, just really talk to people about the topic. All right, then the last point here, are open calls and uh, festivals. So there's one website, it's called Art Connect, and they always list uh, open calls for, uh, yeah, like exhibitions or festivals and stuff. And well, often the re uh, the re reward is um, just that you can show your uh, your art there. But sometimes they also have a budget for you, and they uh, get your accommodation. So yeah, I would also keep checking out that. And if you have any favorite festivals that you would like to participate, then you can also check out their websites. Like for example. I really like Psy festivals, so I'm going uh, to Ozora festival and uh, here to the Boom festival in Portugal. And they also always have open calls. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's not all year round, but you know, if the, if the festival is happening in summer, mostly the applications, I know they start in like October, November or something like that. So yeah, that's also one thing to have in mind. I'm going to apply for the Boom Festival next year for sure. <laughs> yeah, then maybe one point I also want to mention, especially in the beginning, um, that you don't rely on freelancing like 100% straight away. Like that is <laughs> kind of what I did. And yeah, it was very bumpy money wise, I have to say. Uh, 
I had some hard times here to pay my bills sometimes. Um, so yeah, I would recommend to have some kind of re of regular side income as well, especially in the beginning. So yeah, I learned from that mistake and now, well, I'm still doing some like videos for online magazines or something on the side, um, in case I can't, uh, yeah, find freelance work. So yeah, especially when you <laughs> start out, either have a little bit of money on the side, just in case if you don't find work or have another regular side income. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about contracts. Um, so. Like I said, for me, this is also still kind of new and I'm not a professional, so don't see this as a, a bulletproof advice here. Um, just yeah, some key points that uh, I found out that are really important. So, well, in a contract, of course, you should define as precise as possible what you will deliver in the end. You know, because if you just uh, define it very roughly, well, the client might say, yeah, but you know, you said you built like this system, you didn't specify that part or that part, and then they want more and more. So I would really write down as many details as possible um, for your end product or the service that you deliver. And then also um, write down in a contract the amount of um, re revisions that you're doing. So, well, I, I'm doing like three. But, you know, sometimes if you have some <laughs> complicated clients, you never really know uh, what is a revision for them and stuff. So, but I always kind of stick to roughly three, you know, I mean, of course you, you could also do, Hey, I'm doing unlimited re revisions or 10 or 20 or whatever. It might get you an advantage, um, for the competition that you have. But of course, it can also mean that you have to put way more time and effort in your projects. So I just think about that very good. And then, um, always ask for an upfront payment. So that's what I mostly do. Um, before I start to work, I say like, okay, like now we have the contract and stuff, um, that they pay me. I know 25 or 30 or 40 percent it always depends um of the budget and just after that i start to work you know and then also um define some milestone payments yeah maybe for the I know, first version with this and this feature uh, you get another 30 percent and then for the final delivery where well, you get the rest of the percent also, what I had to learn the hard way, um, I recently had a gig where I had to travel to a different country and, um, well, we talked on the phone and they, they also uh, assured me that they will pay the uh, travel costs, but I don't know, somehow it didn't end up in a contract. I wasn't really paying attention to that. Well, and in the end, I don't have, I never got the travel cost. So yeah, in the end, I didn't earn much money for, uh, for that gig. And yeah, I got really upset for it. And, um, yeah, just something that I know always write in the contract that they also have to pay for the travel costs. You know, don't rely on some statements that they make on the phone. Like, yeah, I had to learn that the hard way, but, uh, that's how it is sometimes. And then maybe just a little conclusion and, uh, yeah, coming to the end of the video. So if you start freelancing, it can really be like bumpy and unsafe, uh, in the beginning. So yeah, either have some money on the side or have another income. So yeah, that you're still able to pay your rent, even that you, even when you don't find a freelance job straight away. Um, Probably the most important thing to get jobs is really to to get yourself out there and talk to people and let them know that you are available for work and uh, that you can work like in touch designer or whatever Unreal Engine or I don't know what what your skill is because well if no one knows no one's gonna hire you you know and also I know I was. In the beginning, I was also very like nervous and uh, didn't 
wasn't 100 sure like oh can i really do like all the system that the client wants and stuff but um well if you have a good understanding of your of your platform uh, touch designer in my case um well, you will find a solution and if you don't know it yet it's also very good to uh yeah just to learn that way and getting paid for it as well Okay, I hope that got you a little insight um, of yeah someone who who is kind of new to being a freelancer and touch designer. And yeah, like I said, this is no legal advice here or like bulletproof um, facts. This is just my personal experience. And um, yeah, and I hope you can get something out of that video. If you have any questions, uh, also just comment below. And yeah, that's it. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.